Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. Today we are joined by Marie Farrell, who is an MP for the Sinn Féin party in Galway. Uh, she's here to speak with us about the current political situation in Ireland. Uh, on May 5th, the north of Ireland went to the polls. They elected the members of the Legislative Assembly. There were pretty uh, shocking or maybe not so shocking results for the Sinn Féin party. Since then, the north of Ireland has been in a bit of a political stalemate. There's been a lot of back and forth negotiation. She's here with us today to break that down, what's been happening, and also reflect on the general political situation in the country. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be virtually with you. <laughs> Great. Well, let's get right into it. So on May 5th, there were these, as I mentioned, historic elections. Can you tell a little bit about what happened and what does this mean for the north of Ireland? Well, I suppose just for a little bit of background um, and for people's understanding, what occurred 100 years ago was the partition um, of our country. And as a result, then there's the north and the south that people would have heard of or um, the north of Ireland and uh, the Republic of Ireland that people would have heard of. So in the north, really, the way the north was set up was that there would always be a unionist majority within the north. And that um, would be that they wanted to keep the union with Britain. So you wouldn't have um, a nationalist or what we would describe ourselves as Republican, um, which is separate to, I suppose, the US Republican and the Irish Republican is a separate thing. Um, to be the head of um, the assembly and so it was it's really really historic that Michelle O'Neill is now the first minister designate so on the 5th of May um, the people came to the polls um, and they voted and they and they really voted in their droves for Sinn Féin and, and for having um, Michelle O'Neill as first minister so, so what we would say is that that state was set up so that somebody like Michelle O'Neill would never have the opportunity of being first minister. So what it says for equality and for, um, you know, access, you know, access to, to, to everything is that now um, there is no job that is without, outside of the reach of um, the nationalist community. That's certainly significant. And, you know, following these results, it wasn't, you know, it's been a bit difficult of how to move forward. It doesn't, it seems like there's a bit of a stalemate. Maybe there have been advances. Can you kind of catch us up to speed on what's been happening since then? Yes, of course. So basically what happened then was, so the DUP had um, been in the role of this first minister within um, the assembly. So for people to understand, um, it is the DeHunt system that is used in the assembly post the you know Good Friday Agreement. So that means that people from um, a variety of parties uh, would have um, ministerial roles in that, but this position of first minister had been the role, the position of the DUP. So obviously that changed come the election. But what we've had since is that the DUP UP have refused to um, nominate for the position of speaker. So I'm not sure if that's what you have over there, but um, the position of speaker would mean that there could be the functioning and the running of the assembly, um, even before the executive, which would be the ministers and the first and deputy first minister um, would be elected. So they've refused to do that and, and they refuse that on the grounds that they feel that the protocol isn't working. So the protocol coming out of the on the back of uh, Brexit. And of course, um, um, you know, there's the, they've long been saying that there's been issues in that, but you know, th this was the agreement that had been come to. Um, and really, what we are saying very clearly is that, as we all know, the cost of living crisis is really bad. It's really, really impacting on um, on on our communities, and and we need to have the assembly up and running to uh, assist in that. Definitely. And, you know, just in a broader sense, I think we've seen with the the growth of Sinn Féin, not only in the North, but across the Republic. You yourself were elected in 2020, um, now part of the, <laughs> the parliament. Can you talk a little bit about this impressive growth? What is it reflecting? Um, you know, Sinn Féin was founded over 100 years ago, but is really in the past decade kind of gaining this strength um, in in the parliament across the country seems to be rising in popularity. What's behind this? Well, I think what people are realizing is that the way politics has been done and the way um, politics was done for so many years isn't actually the way it has to be. So we're very much running on a mandate of change, you know, that things can actually be more equal, that the way things run at the moment, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and one thing that we often talk about is, you know, that people don't have the access to 
a, a lot of different you know things that there is just isn't that equality and um, so at the moment for example we're very much campaigning on the cost of living crisis so we're talking about the likes of that you know that any additional supports that are brought by government, that they need to be targeted to those most at need. That you don't do a blanket targeting, that you do do a target at those who are most in need. But even before this cost of living crisis, and look, I'm aware that the, infl the inflation crisis is outside of um, our governments, you know, they, you know, they can't control that and they can't do everything but they can do something and they can have it targeted. But what even before that, we did have some of the highest cost of living in Europe. Like we had the highest rents in Europe. So we have had a situation for years that there's a severe housing crisis. So that means that most people that come into my office here, my constituency in Galway, they're coming because they have nowhere to live. The rents are far too high. They can't pay them. They can't save um, to, to buy a house. And we, now we have a situation where there are so few properties to rent that a lot of people are going homeless. Um, so it's it's really at a really bad crisis point. Um, and it would be our view that the government didn't haven't acted enough and haven't acted quickly enough um, to deal with those crises. And in some senses, I, I, I feel that the government are tone deaf on these issues. So it's the issues that are really impacting on the day to day lives of ordinary workers and families. And that is what the government have not been able to get. No, I, I think that's exactly right. And we're really seeing how this cost of living crisis is sort of upending uh, politics across Europe. Um, and then, you know, finally, I just wanted to ask, you know, you're a young woman from a revolutionary, in a sense, party. Can you talk a, bit, a little bit about your path into politics and, you know, this new face of Sinn Féin? What does this mean um, for the future? Well, I suppose I would see new, when I hear the term new face or new generation, I roll my eyes. <laughs> but um, I suppose, look, I mean, I believe in um, a United Ireland. And I suppose my background would be that I always had a quite an interest in in Irish history. So I've always had a keen interest in that from a young teenager and would have always read about that. And then I um, did my leaving cert. So I finished my secondary school education in 2008, obviously at the height of, um, you know, the crisis and there was very little prospects for people my age and that really brought me an interest in economics and I ended up studying economics at degree and master's level as well and that Sinn Féin spoke to me you know they spoke to me they spoke to that generation that were you know just being what what Irish government after Irish government has relied on emigration um so that they don't have to deal with the crisis that that it faces but I think for me it's that fundamentally we, you know, fundamentally, I don't believe the way society is run at the moment is the most equal. I don't, I think there's so many people that are left behind. And I think that, um, that you know, when people say to you, what is the point in life? The point in life is to make it for me is to make life uh, in the world better for others, for the people that we share in the world with. And I think Sinn Féin is the best vehicle to do that. Uh, thank you so much. Those are really amazing reflections. It was great to speak with you. Thank we'll definitely you. be following the situation across the Republic of Ireland, maybe United Ireland on the horizon. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, thanks so much for joining us and keep watching People's Dispatch.